Welcome to another video from ExplainingComputers.com. This time I'm going to show you some of my favourite small computing things. Those bits and pieces that I wouldn't like to be without, and which oil the wheels of my computing activities. So, let's go take a closer look. Right. Here we have all of my favourite, very small and very useful computing things. I've never seen all of them together like this before. It's rather reassuring. Anyway, I thought we'd start with these. And what these are, are rubber covers or anti-dust plugs for USB-C ports. And I'm someone who often carries portable SSDs like these in my pocket. And these things are sold as being drop proof and waterproof and smash proof and all those kind of things. But even so, the actual ports on the end, the USB-C ports, are unprotected. And whilst it's true you wouldn't get water through on those ports, they can gather lots of dirt and dust and general sort of crud in the end of the port. I don't like that. And so I like the fact I can put in one of these little rubber plugs like that and keep it completely protected. To me, it seems obvious you're going to spend money on a device like this. You want to put a, something to cover a USB-C port. Same goes, of course, if you're using a smartphone or a tablet, for example, that hasn't got port protected. And I found I've had to experiment to get the right things to use here. You can get these things completely made of rubber or you can get them with a solid end and a bit of rubber beneath it. I find the ones with a solid end don't work anywhere near as well. They tend to fall out. But these rubber ones don't fall out. And so these are the first of my very useful small computing things. Next on my list we have these things, HDMI couplers, another small low cost and very useful computing and related item. Some are more rounded like this, some are more square in design like that, but what they all do is to allow us to link together two full size HDMI leads. So I could take an HDMI lead like this and plug it in like uh, that, and take another one and plug it in uh, like, uh, get it in Chris, that, there we are. And I've now linked together two HDMI leads. And this is useful not just for extending cables, but I use these on the end of short cables plugged into a lot of cameras and recording devices and computers and things to avoid wear on their actual connector. And I often also use these if I've got a lead going into the back of, for example, a large monitor or television, haven't got good access to the particular port. If you've got a small lead that comes out of the back of the monitor or the television, it goes into one of these, and then you plug another lead in. If you want to plug something else into that port, you don't have to get to the back of the monitor or the television. You just detach that cable and you can connect something else in. And so that's why I find HDMI couplers to be a very useful small computing thing. Third on my list, we have the adapter I reach for more than any other kind these days, which has a male USB-C connector on one end and a female USB type A connector on the other. And in fact, I have several of these in use. Here's another one, which is a very similar. And I find these very handy because increasingly we have mobile devices that don't have what I call proper USB ports. And so if you want to plug a USB device into them, you have to use a cable like this. And also I often work with zero form factor single board computers, and these increasingly use USB-C connectors, so you want to connect to a Type-A to plug in a keyboard and a mouse, things like that. And if you're thinking you don't have to use a cable, you don't, you can get things like this, which are the same USB-C male on the end and USB-A female there. But I find plugging one of these into a mobile device is not ideal. It's much better to have a cable. And so this is why this is another of my favourite small computing things. Next, something else I'll use on a very regular basis is this USB 3 to SATA adapter. And this allows a 2.5 inch SSD or hard drive to be connected to a USB port on pretty much any computer. So I could take, for example, a bare drive like this and connect in the SATA adapter like uh, that. There we go. And we can now plug this into a computer. And so this type of adapter is very handy for accessing bare drives. I have a lot of bare drives lying around now. And it's also a very useful device if you want to clone content when you're upgrading to a new system drive, as I demonstrated in my recent video all about free cloning applications. And if you're a regular viewer of this channel, you'll also know I often use devices 
like this, often this particular device, but also other ones, for example, this one over here. I often use these for connecting SATA SSDs to a Raspberry Pi or other single board computers. They really are very handy bits of kit. Next, we have another exciting adapter that adds an Ethernet port to any computer with a USB port. And specifically, this is USB 3 to Ethernet adapter, although it'll work in a USB 2 port. And it does have a USB Type A connector, as we can see. But remember, I also use a lead like this, which means I can add an Ethernet port to any computing device with a USB A or C connector. And I do find this incredibly useful because there are so many times I want to have a really good quality internet or other network connection, and Wi Fi just doesn't always cut it. And these days, there are so many mobile devices and laptops that just don't have an Ethernet port. And yet, people sit there on their laptop, for example, and go, Oh, I've got a terrible internet connection. They haven't got a terrible internet connection, they've got terrible Wi Fi. And yet, if you use a device like this, you can get a proper connection on a device that hasn't got that good Wi-Fi connectivity. And so I find myself reaching for this increasingly on mobile devices, even on some single board computers that haven't got an Ethernet port. It is a really handy device to have available. Right, we now have a hardware encrypted USB drive that I've carried in my pocket for almost 10 years, and which is where all of my passwords live, so they're never stored in any of my computers, let alone in a password manager. And before anybody starts typing in the comments, I do have multiple encrypted drives with my passwords on them stored in different locations, but this is the drive in most common use. Specifically, what we have here is a Datashore hardware encrypted 4 gigabyte USB drive, and it's extremely robust. This is a solid metal case, although over the years it has lost a lot of its paint. If I bring in a version of the drive which is not stored in my pocket and gets bashed all the time, as you can see, it's a bit different. It's amazing how it changed. And if you're wondering how it worked, let's just pop off the cover like that, and if we just take a look inside, if I just press the button here, you'll see it'll start flashing. It's waiting for a code to be put in. This is a self-powered device. It's got a rechargeable battery, which has lasted almost 10 years now. That's good, isn't it? And to gain access, you have to put your code onto the keypad. I'm obviously not going to do that. And the great thing is here, because all of the encryption is handled in hardware on the device, this works on any computing device running any operating system. And if you want to know more, there are several Explaining Computers videos about both hardware and software encrypted USB drives, and I'll provide links in the video description. Guess what? We've now got this, which is a USB 3 micro SD card reader. Although we always call them readers, but actually it's a reader writer, isn't it? Because it means I can take a micro SD card, I've got one off screen somewhere, here it is, we can plug that in there, and we can now both read and write to that micro SD card. And I do find this very handy because although lots of devices have got micro SD card slots, they're often not very fast, and larger devices tend to have SD card slots rather than micro still, at least mine do, so I'm often looking for an adapter like this. And I often use this in particular for imaging operating systems to micro SD cards for testing on single board computers. So this has become a little bit of a friend over the years. I'd feel rather sad if I couldn't lay my hands on this particular hardware device. Next, we have one of my YubiKey hardware authentication devices. Or more specifically, this is a YubiKey 5C, which I always have with me, and which I keep plugged into a USB A to C adapter, as we can see here. If I just take this out, which is a quite tough like that, sorry I went off screen there, but there we are, this is the, uh, the adapter, this is the YubiKey, it's got a USB C connector. I like to use it though off a lot of the time in a USB A port, and you can buy YubiKeys with USB A connectivity, but they do it without having the proper shield, they really are not ideal in my view, so I keep it this way. I can use this as a USB A port or a USB C port. And what this does, if you're not aware, this provides really secure two factor authentication, as detailed in my video, Cybersecurity Protecting Online Accounts. 
The way it works is that to access most of my online accounts, I have to enter a username and a password, and then I have to plug this into a USB port on the computer and then touch the contact to authenticate the login. And this makes things really secure as nobody can access my accounts unless they have this or another of my YubiKeys in their possession. Now, I hope you're sitting down because my final favourite small computing thing is this, and it's not intended to be plugged into a USB port. Rather, what we have here is a self-constructed little device comprised of an LED and a current limiting resistor. I think that's 220 ohms. If it isn't, you'll tell me pretty quickly in the comments. And they are soldered to a bit of header on the end, as you can see, like that. And the reason I have this is I can plug it onto the GPIO connectors on a single board computer or microcontroller just to test things out, to test out software for GPIO control. And I put this together a few years ago, just thought I'd use it once in a video, and it keeps coming out. It's very, very useful. You don't often see it on screen in an Explainer Computers video, but it's often there in the background helping out with preparation and testing, things like that. And so for me, it's a much valued small computing thing. So there we are. Those are the bits and bobs, the bits of computing hardware that keep my computing activity chugging along. But uh, what about you? Do you have any favourite computing things, little bits of hardware which are critical to your computing activities? If so, do share them with us down in the comments section. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.